At any given moment, there are 150 million or more asteroids flying around the solar system. So how can we photograph them? And what can we do to contribute to the science of asteroid discovery and confirmation? I'm Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. Even if you've got a computerized telescope, and even if you've got planetarium software running on your computer, you don't have the go-to coordinates to just go straight to an asteroid. Usually you need to import that data from the Minor Planetary Center, or get the ephemeris in there some way so that you can target your telescope to the asteroid. The first method is to go to a page in the Minor Planetary Center called What's Up. Enter in your longitude and latitude, and hit the Now button for the current UTC time, and it will show you what's actually above you right now. And, and it gives you that list in order of magnitude so the easier stuff is available first. You'll even find cool stuff like Ceres, the dwarf planet. I used this method just a couple of nights ago to find an image asteroid Florence over two nights. Florence is listed as one of the potentially hazardous asteroids and ironically is named after Florence Nightingale, the founder of modern nursing. Of course you'll need to plug the RA and deck coordinates into your mount somehow, whether that's through the planetarium or acquisition software that you're using, or you can use the hand controller to punch those details in. Uh, it really helps if you have a plate solve or very accurate go-to, uh, so you can get right to the position of the asteroid and have it fairly in the middle of the frame, because they can move, so if you take too long getting there, um, those coordinates will be different. You can then run a series of exposures. I recommend at least one to two minutes exposure, especially for the fainter ones, and then keep running the exposures so you've got 30 or 40 and you can make a really nice animation and see how that asteroid is moving. So asteroid photography, it's less about making beautiful magazine quality images and more about getting the motion of these objects. And probably in another video I'll show you more detail about using Astrometrica software to then generate some of the data that you need to submit to the Minor Planetary Center and contribute to the science. The next method for finding asteroids is to use a bit of luck. If you're like me, you've got a huge bank of images that you've built up over the years where you've actually taken a series of exposures to build up uh, an image, like a nebular image or a wide field image, and you've just got hard drives full of this stuff. So what I did for a couple of nights was I blinked my images. Now what that means is that you take the registered images, so all the stars have been registered so that they all align, and then you use the blink function there's a number of tools you can do it in. I use the PixInsight blink feature, and that allows you to set a loop quite quickly. In PixInsight, I recommend hitting the automatic histogram transformation, which basically sets all the levels so that it doesn't look like a dark image or a light image are flickering too much. And then zoom into your image and look around and see if you can find any movement. Blinking is the same process that was used to discover Pluto, simply by looking at images in rapid succession in order to see if something's moving. Once you've found an asteroid in your data, you can then identify that asteroid using software like Astrometrica, which I'll show you in more detail in another video. There is another method you can use to discover an asteroid in a data set. And that's if you have a start and a finish image, and it's already been registered, so the stars are aligned, and you lay them over the top of each other in Photoshop. Then you can use the subtract feature. Now, as long as you've pulled out a lot of the noise and the, using dark frames and that sort of calibration, uh, doing the subtract will remove everything that's similar in both of the images and that will leave you with anything that's moved or changed in that frame. And that can be a lot easier than blinking because it really makes the asteroid stand out. I've also been working on this little web tool which filters the real-time information from the Minor Planetary Center and shows you the near-Earth objects needing confirmation. This is stuff that's been discovered in the last 24 to 48 hours or even less than that and they've been discovered overnight and sometimes they, they might be visible to you and if they are you can actually contribute to the science by confirming these discoveries. This is the first step if a new object is discovered. This is how new comets, new asteroids are discovered, even stuff that eventually goes on to get named. So it's a really fantastic way to get involved as a citizen scientist in real science, real astronomy. I checked with the Minor Planetary Center and they've looked at the tool and they've given me permission to share it publicly. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to um, dust off some cobwebs and do a bit more debugging 
and make sure it's all good before I release it to the public. So stay tuned for that. That's it for now, so I'll see you later.